thank you for joining our Adobe Digital Leaders Series. My name is Michael Bingham, and I'll be hosting today's session titled, Why Universal Analytics Sunsetting is Actually Great News. Hint, perfect time for an upgrade. In this session, you'll learn how to navigate this significant change and come out on top with Adobe's Customer Journey Analytics Tools. Our expert speakers today are Danielle Doolin, who is the Principal Product Marketing Manager for Adobe Analytics, Trevor Paulson, who is a Group Product Manager for Adobe Customer Journey Analytics, and Charles Farina, who is a leading analytics expert and the head of innovation at AdsWord. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, and over to you, Danielle. Great, thank you so much, Michael. It's such a pleasure to be with you all today. Hope you all are staying cool in this hot summer heat and staying indoors. Today we have a great webinar scheduled for you. Uh, we have our experts here, Trevor Paulson, who's gonna show us around customer journey analytics and just why it's ready for you to upgrade. We also have Charles Farina, our AdSwerve partner, who's here, he's the expert on Google Analytics as well as Adobe Analytics. So we're really excited about everything that we have planned for today. Just a quick recap of the agenda for today. We really want you to be able to see the capabilities of customer journey analytics and some of the advanced features and functionalities that we have to offer that aren't necessarily there today with GA4. So today's session is gonna be totally interactive. We're gonna show you a live demo. We're gonna have a long Q&A session because we wanna be able to get to your questions and be able to answer them with our experts here today. Um, we're also going to talk through some of the challenges and why we feel that customer journey analytics is your answer for the future of your analytics strategy. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Charles, and he's just going to talk through what the current state of things are with the Google Analytics sunsetting. So Charles, please give us a recap of what's happening. Yeah, so excited to be here. So for those of you who maybe haven't heard the news, Google's making a huge move with their measurement products. So Google Analytics has been around for about 15 years. And for the first time in their history, they're completely re-platforming next year. So for most of you in July of next year, the existing version of Google Analytics will no longer function after that date. And Google's moving to a new product called Google Analytics 4. And that particular product is going to require you to do a new implementation uh, if you'd like to use Google Analytics moving forward. And with that, uh, we're really excited about having this webinar and this opportunity to kind of share solutions with you because offerings like customer journey analytics uh, can really be a key solution in helping solve and add additional functionality that might not necessarily be available as you kind of move through through that GA4 transition. So in this webinar, we're gonna give you this kind of quick overview of CJA. I'm gonna then show you some examples of how you can actually get both the existing and future version of Google Analytics data into the product and show some key differences of why it's a differentiator uh, and it can actually live on top of your existing GA infrastructure. Back to you, Daniel. That sounds great. Thank you, Charles. I'm looking forward to it. So let's get into our first polling question today. Uh, we want to hear from all of you. If you're a Google Analytics customer, what is the most concerning thing about moving from Universal Analytics to GA4? So let's take a little bit of time, look at the answers here we have provided, and, and uh, give us your best answer. And I'm curious to hear, Charles, what are you hearing from your customers as far as like what their biggest concern is? So there's two key challenges right now. One is the fact that you can't port your existing data from the old platform into the new platform. Uh, and that's because the existing version of Google Analytics doesn't offer an export where it can provide you the granular user level data in a way you could put it into GA4. And the new product also doesn't let you kind of batch upload historical data, which is going to be a key kind of differentiator when we talk about CJA. And I would say the other difference that I'm hearing from our customers is around like different features, different types of analysis, and a variety of use cases. So GA4 is still a very new product. It's under heavy development. 
And for a lot of marketers who are trying to do a lot of the things they did in the past, a uh, certain functionality might not necessarily be available in GA4 yet. And that's where CJA, at least for some of my customers, is definitely bridging some of the limitations that is being experienced right now. Great, thank you for that, that's really helpful. Let's see what our, our poll questions show us. Looks like historical data is super important, so excited to share what we have in store for you today with customer journey analytics. So right now I'm just gonna go through some, some examples of what we're hearing in the industry as far as different customer challenges that they're experiencing today. And, and a lot of these are things that customer journey analytics addresses beyond just what your traditional digital analytics uh, solution can do. So first things first, there's inconsistent metrics and the ability to really understand the full journey of a customer. Uh, we know after the pandemic that there's so many ways in which customers interact with brands, both digitally and offline. There's a real conver convergence in terms of the way that they interact with these brands, um, multiple touch points, and you really need to be able to tie those touch points together into a single customer journey for cross-channel analysis. And that's one major uh, advantage of using customer journey analytics. It's not just confined to digital channels. Second here is there's not enough data expertise. And this results in delayed time to action. You wanna be able to get your insights relatively quickly in real time to be able to action against them and provide the be next best experience. To be able to really personalize that experience for the end user and have the insights ready at your fingertips. Um, really being able to optimize against that and having the right resources within your organization, not just your data science team or your business intelligence team. You want to be able to have anyone within your organization be able to use your customer journey analysis tool to be able to get to those insights quickly. And finally, another big topic that we hear so much today is all around privacy compliance. There's been a lot of changes in the industry globally as far as meeting privacy regulations whether it be GDPR or CCPA, having your data stored in the right location. Um, this is all things that customer journey analytics uh, abides by today. We have strict privacy regulations and guidelines. We have data governance tools that allows you to stay within those um, privacy compliance, uh, GDPR and CCPA rules. So really what we wanna stress here is that it's all about customer journey analytics. It's not just digital analytics, it's not traffic analytics, and it's not even just advertising analytics. It's all about everything that happens within a customer journey. And you really need to focus on that first party data strategy and understanding the customer lifetime value. This isn't just the customer's value within the last year, it needs to be year over year and seasonality to understand what, my, what were my customer do, customers doing pre-pandemic during pandemic and post pandemic. Understanding that full customer journey is really important to marketers today. One of the unique advantages that we have with customer journey analytics is the ability to combine online channels and offline channels. So being able to understand how a call center call may impact a digital touch point, like a visit to your mobile app. Being able to understand digital activities and how it resulted in the buy online and pick up in store interaction. All of these types of different data sets reside in silos today. So what customer journey analytics does is it enables you to bring together all of those different data sets, no matter what channel it is, and bring it into one analytics solution to be able to understand cross channel customer journey analysis and to be able to provide that unique 360 degree customer view, not just limited to your web and your app channels. So that's another really unique capability that we have to provide. And finally, before I hand it off to Charles again to talk through some of the unique tools that we have for customer journey analytics in regards to implementation, I just wanna talk through some of the four key pillars that we think of when we talk about customer analysis. We really wanna be able to provide that shift to a customer centric view, be able to provide sequential view visuals and views like flow and pathing and fallout for you to truly understand everything that happens with a customer across all the touch points in their journey. It's super important and it's one thing that we offer within customer journey analytics. Another thing that I mentioned previously is the importance of privacy and data compliance. Being GDPR compliant and CCPA compliant is mandatory today for brands. You need to have a solution that enables you to stay on top of those regulations and ensure you're collecting data 
in a privacy-friendly manner. And third, there's that expectation of data democracy. We want to provide everybody within an organization the ability to collect data and insights across any of their key business questions to get to the metrics that matter to them the most and to be able to democratize that data, whether it be sharing a subset of data, curating data and projects, scheduling projects, or delivering it to your mobile app, just being able to more easily access that data. And finally here, it's just eliminating the IT complexity. You don't wanna to have to heavily rely on your data scientists to be able to run SQL queries to answer questions that you need. You wanna be able to get to that data yourself and have less reliance on your data scientist teams. Um, so these are some of the key capabilities that we uh, stress when we talk about customer journey analytics. And now let's get into the fun part. Now is when we're really gonna talk about the cool things that we have to offer in terms of bringing your Google Analytics data over to customer journey analytics. So Charles, take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, Danielle. And I'm super excited. So I'm gonna try and explain why CJA is just so different than other solutions that are on the market. And then Trevor's gonna expand on just some of the implementation components so you can get a sense of how the ingestion and, and the power of the tool works. And then Trevor and I are gonna actually walk you through an interactive demo so you can see how CGA uh, performs on the fly, which will be really fun. So with that, when we talk about kind of the key difference of CGA, I think the Google Analytics transition is the perfect place to really show how it differentiates from uh, different solutions that are already in the market. A lot of solutions like Google Analytics are primarily built around the way Google Analytics ingests data, which is primarily a web or app centric view. With customer journey analytics, that customer word is really the most important part. You're gonna be orchestrating data around your customer's data sources, not necessarily translating it all into this kind of web or app model that we've all kind of grown up with. So with that, one of the most powerful parts of CJA is that it has the tools to be able to bring data from anywhere into the product. So as an example, with Google Analytics, uh, in the new version of GA4, every customer has access to get their raw granular data into a data warehouse. And with that, you can actually just use the BigQuery connector that's in CJA to ingest all of that data and then use all of the new analysis and reporting capabilities on top of that same data set. So you can still potentially use it for some of Google's media components and then power all of kind of the advanced analytics directly through the CJA platform. Other components we're gonna talk about is Adobe's made really big uh, uh, investments in providing kind of more flexible support for kind of hybrid implementations. So a lot of uh, customers use Google Tag Manager. Some use Adobe Launch, some use both, some use even other tag management platforms. And one thing I'm really excited about is Adobe just released a component where you can actually pick up the Google data layer and you can actually easily ingest it into tools like Adobe Analytics or CJA. And then in addition, with a variety of other imports and exports, there are different components and ways where you can bring some of your old data from Universal Analytics into the new CJA world. There's definitely going to be better options if you're an enterprise customer on the 360 version of Universal Analytics, because that does have a BigQuery connector. Um, but CJA can start to pick up data kind of in any format. So with that, we wanted to get into our next polling question. So we'd love to know, when are you planning to migrate your data uh, from Universal Analytics? Is this something that you've already started or that is uh, something you're planning for the near future? So uh, one, uh, Danielle, can you start the poll? Sorry. Yeah, so with, absolutely. Yeah, with that, um, one thing that's really important um, that we definitely wanted to mention is with the transition of GA4, if you do want to use Google Analytics in the future, it is really important to get started sooner than later. 
And it kind of ties back to the key part we discussed earlier, where Google in this new version doesn't allow you to bring your historical data into that platform. So since GA4 only works point in time forward, um, Google is really encouraging you to begin your migration sooner than later so that you can kind of build up some historical data in the platform. And one difference I really like about CJA is that it's purpose built to ingest historical data. So as an example, um, I was working with Trevor a few weeks ago, and I think we have like four years of historical data that we've collected mm -hmm. inside our BigQuery bucket. And Trevor helped actually connect that all through that native BigQuery connector. And I was able to bring all that universal data directly into the CJA product. So that's kind of that statement where it's purpose built around the customer, not necessarily around the other components. So we'll touch on that in just a little bit. We'll also that's be sending great. out some, some materials afterward that will have some more detailed links on all of the different options and stuff that you have at your disposal, including integrating into Google Tag Manager, you know, bringing, connecting to BigQuery and stuff so you can get into the nitty gritty details, you know, we'll, we'll send all that information out after the yeah, webinar. Yeah, inter interesting to see from the poll that a lot of the users aren't sure at the moment when they're going to start that migration. So perfect time for us to go through this webinar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back to you, Charles. So with that, as Trevor mentioned, we're going to be sending all of you and making available a lot of resources. And one of the ones that I mentioned in my intro is a brand new release that Adobe just put out there. And I think this is so cool. So again, a lot of customers have these kind of hybrid implementations, especially if you have uh, kind of a bigger web presence. And what I mean by that is what tag management system you might be using might be varied. And it's very common that even if you use one platform, maybe your organization buys another company and you start incorporating different types of tech stacks. And what Adobe's done is they've just put out a new extension for Adobe Launch where it can actually pick up the Google Tag Manager data layer natively. So what that means is traditionally doing a migration to something like Adobe Analytics would take a lot of time because Google Tag Manager doesn't have like Adobe Analytics uh, extensions for you to use. But with this option, what you can do is you just add one snippet to every page, the Adobe Launch Snippet. That Adobe Launch Snippet and that extension is purpose built to ingest the GTM data layer. And then you can use that to feed it to any platform you want. So obviously all of the Adobe uh, products you could also feed it back into GA4. And of course, we have lots of options to get it over to CJA. So if anyone is considering moving towards Adobe, this new launch extension is going to be fabulous for speeding up the time to kind of get data into these new platforms when you do need a client side component. Another way that you can feed data into CJA is instead of doing things that client side route where we're using sort of a tag manager to ingest that data, another option is essentially CJA has a repository of data connections. And this is like a little bit similar to say like a data visualization tool where you're connecting it to like a BigQuery or an Azure or whatever source you want. That's what CJA is built to do. So this is what I mentioned that I had worked on with Trevor is that within CJA, there's actually connectors into Google's cloud products. And that's where within both GA4 and my old version of Google Analytics, I have all of my raw historical data sitting. And in addition, it's collecting every day. And if I wanted to use CJA to unlock all of these capabilities that Trevor and I are going to show you, all I have to do is connect this data and I'm ready to go. It's purpose built to ingest it. It can do it on an ongoing basis and it can do it from a historical perspective. So this kind of blew my mind because within my Google world, I've never been able to uh, basically incorporate historical data. Google's tools aren't necessarily built to do that at all. So Trevor, I'll throw it over to you. Cool, yeah. So with, with CJA, you know, obviously there's a lot 
uh, that you can do with it. Um, and we're going to walk you through some of the basics here. But, you know, as this slide shows, we've got lots of stuff for you to ingest data, lots of tools, whether that's streaming, whether that's batching, whether that's using our pre-built connectors. We have tools for preparing the data. So if, if you need to make some adjustments to the data as it flows into the system, we have a rich set of data preparation tooling that makes that a lot easier for it to do. Um, one of the biggest things I feel like that sets apart CJA from other solutions out there, even Adobe Analytics, is its flexibility around identity. Um, customers often have, you know, they don't like to think about their users or their customers in terms of a cookie or a device, right? They like to think about things in terms of a holistic journey, um, which includes multiple devices and offline data sources and all of the above. And a big part of that is being able to stitch all of those data sets together around a set of identities that can be completely flexible to what you have. So we'll show you briefly how that kind of works in CJA. And I think that's one of the biggest things that you have, even tying back to the question in the chat about how CJA differs from Google BigQuery. Well, Google BigQuery doesn't help you with identity challenges or any of that stuff. So CJA really does help. And then as far as configuring um, you know, and consuming, so many options. So CJ is, is really flexible when it comes to reporting. You have the ability to manipulate data on the fly in ways that we've never had in Adobe Analytics before. Um, you know, actually, you know, deconstructing strings and also we'll show you some of this stuff. It's really cool. And then finally, uh, consuming insights obviously is one of the things that we strive to make very easy to do um, in CJA. Analysis Workspace, which is our customer's favorite analysis tool, we'll, we'll dive in there. We have lots of other things as well, like a mobile app and PDFs, uh, and you can get, uh, we have an Excel integration. All of these things are included when you buy CJA. So lots of different ways to consume and help your stakeholders get the information they need to make better business decisions with that holistic picture of your customer's journeys. So just talking about stitching, this is one of the first things that I always get asked because it's simultaneously the most complicated, but also like so confusing for most people. So in CJA, you know, we bring in data from lots of sources and those sources can come from anywhere, right? Like you have call center, sometimes that's based on a phone number or a customer ID. You have web data that can be based on a cookie. You have mobile app data that can be based on a device-based ID. CRM information, which has CRM IDs, you know, all that stuff uh, can get really confusing. And, you know, just simply kind of combining those data sets together doesn't even, doesn't really allow you to connect the dots between them. For example, answering a basic question like, which of our pages are producing the most calls in our call center? That's a highly non-trivial question to answer when you think about, you know, trying to write raw SQL or something to try and produce that query, you know, produce the query required to answer that question. So in CJA, what we do is you, you have the flexibility to specify lots of different types of IDs, and that can be fed into our process that actually stitches that data together. So it's not like, uh, it's not like it's a go forward stitching. We actually go backwards in time to, you know, to the beginning of your data, and we can actually restate as we learn connections, you know, between devices and CRM IDs and stuff, we go back in time and restate that data constantly. So it's like a continually improving your data over time so that when you report on it in CJA, it's always the most up to date based on the most inform recent information that we have at any given point. So being that that stitching process is really the magic that allows you to get this cross channel uh, reporting that you can't really do anywhere else uh, outside of CJA. So yeah, Trevor, that, that's such a huge point because again, it just reinforces that customer view because from the Google the Google side, when we when we push customer data like a CRM upload or we try and upload offline data, we've always had this window where that data has to come in basically like within 24 to 72 hours of the web interaction. And then Google doesn't allow you to go back and use that user ID on a backwards basis. So it only kind of uses that user ID on go forward. And there's a limited window on when you have to get that data in the platform. 
So where I've been able to really help customers with CJA is, is just that flexibility, right? It, it can both go backwards. So you can actually use data that maybe you get on a latent basis. And in addition, it actually stitches it in a way you can use it uh, on both a go forwards and a go backwards basis, which is just, just such a, a key differentiator for me. Awesome. So let's jump into the third polling question here. So which of the following functions do you value in the, in the most in an analytics platform? This is an interesting one because there's some pretty important stuff in this list. Compliance with data regulations, obviously super important. Ease of use, uh, complete co data collection, and actionable insights. Let's see what people think. In the meantime, yeah, oh, go ahead. I was sorry, I was just gonna make a point of clarification because you know how we love our acronyms here at Adobe. Uh, for everyone in the audience, if you're wondering what CJA is, it's Customer Journey Analytics. On that note, let's talk, while people are filling out the poll, let me answer a couple of common questions about Customer Journey Analytics. One of the most common questions I get is, hey, do you have to buy uh, Adobe Experience Platform or do you have to buy Adobe Analytics to get CJA? The, the answer to that question is it's actually really flexible. We have lots of different ways to get it. If you, you can buy CJA all by itself with nothing else, and it comes included with all of the AEP componentry that you need to make it work. So that's definitely an option. Um, you can also, if you're an existing Adobe Analytics customer or you want to be an existing Adobe Analytics customer, you can also add CJA as an add-on on top of it. Um, as well. So we have a lot of flexible licensing options if you're interested in taking the plunge. Um, and of course, you know, we're more than happy to talk to anyone that wants to learn more about that. So let's see those poll results. Actionable insights. Very interesting. Okay, well, that's great. So let's, let's move it on to our live demo. Excited to see this. Awesome. Okay, ready to I'm going to share my stuff. screen here. Go ahead. So are you ready to have some fun? Hey, yeah, let's do it. Okay, let me share my screen. So while here. Trevor is pulling up his screen, uh, Trevor and I were having a really fun session kind of going uh, back and forth and using some of our uh, universal data. And I was asking Trevor to show me how I could solve some of the challenges that I'm being faced with uh, with the GA4 platform. So one of the things that I asked Trevor to do was if he could help me build kind of a custom bounce rate. So if anyone has used Google Analytics, you're probably very familiar with bounce rate. It's basically a single page visit. And what you may not know is that in the new version of Google Analytics, they've actually updated the definition of bounce rate. And now by default, it's not a single page visit. It's like defined by 10 seconds of interactivity or a conversion or a certain amount of events. It's a much more kind of different definition. So I have a lot of customers that want to continue to like use bounce rate the way it was. And I've also had customers who want to like create their own version of bounce rate. So one of the things I'd love to have you show Trevor is could you show us like using uh, the data set how we could like build bounce rate and what sort totally. of flexibility we'd have around that. Yeah, let's do it. So let me tell you what data I've got in here before we jump and start playing with it. So for this demo today, I've actually taken some real Google Analytics data um, and I got it from like Google offers this free, this data from their like swag store. <laughs> so you can like see what things people are buying on their swag store. So I took data from that that they give out for free. I loaded it into CJA, and I've actually mixed it with data from Firebase and some call center data, as well as some CRM data to show you not only what you can do with GA data, but how powerful it is when you combine it with other stuff too. But let's start with the basics. This is Analysis Workspace. If you've never seen it before, it's our free form analysis canvas that you can use to like drag you can drag and drop anything in here and kind of create visualizations and analyses on the fly to answer any question that you might have and if i look here at the dimensions you'll see a lot of dimensions that may be familiar to you if you've used google analytics or if you've used uh you know that data in BigQuery, for example 
you know, one of the things that uh, I've got in here is the page title. And by simply dragging and dropping, dropping that into my freeform table, I can now see what pages are most popular on that merchandise store. And I can, I'm looking at it by events, but I can bring that in against any other uh, metric as well. So if I have like, for example, the sessions metric, which is really important for, um, you know, different views into, um, into the data. Like if I wanted to see, you know, this will be an important piece of the formula for bounce rate, Charles, that you're talking about. So if I want to see how many sessions started on each of these pages, I can quickly get that as well. Um, one of the most powerful things too about CJ that I'll just mention in passing is that a lot of this stuff happens all on the fly. So if you want to define the way that a session is defined, you can do that. You can actually go in and edit that in a data view, change your session definition and have it reflect in a way that makes sense to you. 30 minute timeout. Well, maybe you want an hour timeout because that's how long we want to wait before we, you know, we give a call center call or, I may want to start a session when a specific event occurs. So we have a lot of flexibility there. But let's let's answer your question, Charles. How do I define a custom bounce rate? So what I've done here is I've actually created a calculated metric. Let me show let me actually open it up and show you. Now, one of the most cool things about calculated metrics in CJA is you can actually add these filters, which is another um, fundamental component that you can use in analysis and CJA as something that gets applied to a metric. So I've got my sessions metric. And if I look here at my bounce sessions filter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all the events where a session start exists and a session end exists. So give me all the sessions that basically had a single event where the session started and ended on the same event, which is how I would define a bounce. And so using that, if I just drag that in as a bounce session, I've defined that calculated metric on the fly. I drag it and drop it in here and immediately, boom, I can see exactly how many of the sessions I had were bounce sessions. You know, I can also do bounce rate. So if I look at the calculated metric for bounce rate, very easy to do. And again, just counting up the number of sessions Oops, I opened up bounce sessions. It's just simply a matter of dividing bounce sessions by the total number of sessions, which would give me the bounce rate. Calculated metrics let me format this as a percent. I can even flag whether this uh, a, an upward trend is good or bad. In this case, bounce rate going up is bad. So I'm going to flag that as bad and hit save. And when I drag in my bounce rate, metric that I just created into my freeform table, I can now easily see the bounce rate. And, you know, if I do a little bit of conditional formatting, uh, you know, it, it'll automatically know that good is, you know, high numbers are bad. So it goes red on a 95%. You know, it'll, you can drag and drop in any number of visualizations as well. Uh, you know, if you want to make this a little more visually appealing, um, that's very easy to do as well as you just saw. Um, so yeah, Trevor, Charles, one, I don't know. Did that, did that get you what you needed? Heck yes. So one one huge thing about that is like GA4 doesn't have calculated metrics. And even if you looked at calculated metrics in the current version of Google Analytics, what Trevor did is he solved a number of challenges that I've had for quite some time in the past. He actually used a metric he created on the fly to create a calculated metric. And that sort of flexibility was never really possible in the old version of Google Analytics. So the flexibility of creating whatever version of bounce rate is most applicable for your business is huge. And then in addition, there's another huge part where he talks about that flexibility to like define like what a session even is. And in GA4, it's very rigid. Uh, a session is defined by like 30 minutes of an activity and you can adjust the time, but that's pretty much it. And with CJA, you, you can start to see that power. You're defining the metrics, you're defining the session, you're defining all of that on the fly. And he's pulling in all of that historical data. So another thing, Trevor, that I saw is like a, a classic example. Like if we look at your page titles, 
we can see that the page titles have a lot of kind of information uh, within each page. And we can see there's kind of the del delimiters where we seem to have like a concept of page categories. So another component that I love about CJA is like that flexibility to not only create these metrics on the fly, but even possibly create or parse different dimensions. Could you uh, maybe show us some of the flexibilities of how we could play with that page title to make it more meaningful? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to show you two really cool things that you can do, actually. So first of all, let's create a site section dimension out of my page title dimension. What I've jumped into here is the actual data view editor. A data view is what we use to define all of the query times uh, configurations that you want to use when you're using CJA. So in this case, this is where I define my metrics and my dimensions. It's also where I define my session, like we just talked about before with all of the different session options and time zone settings and all that stuff. But just honing in on page title. So let me find my page title dimension. You can see um, we offer the ability to do a lot of interesting stuff here in the right rail. So there's all sorts of settings that you can apply to any dimension that you have. So in this case, I've got substring, I've got uh, behavior, I can lowercase things, I can change how it treats null values, I can even filter out values, like, like if I put in some junk that I don't want in there, I can get rid of it. I can apply persistence to it as well, which is like a, you know, we used in Adobe Analytics, we used to call this concept a virtual cookie, but in CJA, we allow you to do this all on the fly and it works retroactively and historically. But let, let's just focus in here on the site section use case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this page title dimension, I'm gonna hit duplicate, and I'm gonna change the name of this to actually site section. So let me change that, site section. And if I scroll down and I do substring, you'll notice that all of the different uh, sites, the, the site sections were actually delimited by a pipe. And the root section was everything to the left of the first pipe. That's real easy to do. All I have to do in the substring method, you can see I have lots of different options here. I'm gonna pick delimiter and put the pipe and just grab everything from the first delimiter up into the first delimiter. So really easy. Now that will on the fly actually change that data as if it was collected that way in the first place. So we'll save that one for later, but let me show you one more thing that you can even do. Let's pretend that we didn't even have an orders metric. Well, one of the most powerful aspects of CJA is to actually create metrics from dimensions as well. So if I were to take this, I could basically create a duplicate of it again and switch it from a dimension to a metric. And it'll be like, hey, do you really want to do that? And I want to say yes. And to make this an orders metric, all I have to do is come down here to my include exclude and say only include pages that contain the phrase confirmation, which is what actually happens in this example. So only the, if, whenever I see an order confirmation page, um, I'm going to treat that as my orders metric. Now, if I save that data view, I already had it set up, so I'm not actually going to save it here. So when, after saving those dimensions, uh, you can literally see how fast the changes take place. It's not like we're going back and, and having to restate your data or anything. This all happens on the fly. When I drag in the site section dimension, you can see how fast it updated that. And it literally is changing the underlying dimension to behave as if it was always that way in the first place. Not this, only that. Is, yeah, this oh, is huge. Trevor. Yeah, this is huge, Trevor, because like in my, in my world of working with Google Analytics, almost everything has always been point in time forward. And the e-commerce example is a classic one. Something at some point in time always goes wrong with e-commerce tracking. And I think just tracking in general. So something happens where maybe a developer removes the script on the orders page, or there's a certain subject of customers where there's some race condition or whatever happens. And in my past, you can only fix it on a, on a go forward basis. But showing this kind of new world of CJA, uh, Trevor showing you how you can basically restate history and it's all on the fly. And that flexibility is just such a huge ad. Yeah, let's actually bring in the orders metric to really round out that point. So if I bring in the orders metric, you can see 
Um, it's treating order. Now, if I sort this by orders, you'll see, okay, not very interesting. All of my orders happen on the checkout confirmation site section. <laughs> okay, not that useful. But one of the other powerful things that we offer in CJA is the ability to do very flexible attribution. So in this case, all I have to do is hit my column settings, check this box, and then you can see all of the different attribution models that I can now use on this metric that I just created out of my page uh, title field. In this case, I'm going to pick participation. This is all of our customers' favorite model. What participation does is it actually allows you to see how many orders each and every page participated in uh, in some user's flow. So obviously the checkout confirmation page participated in all of them, but using this on-the-fly orders with an on-the-fly attribution model against my on-the-fly site section dimension, I can now get some really interesting insights into what pages are most critical in my user's journey toward conversion. You can see um, you know, some of these check out your information, but look at this one, men's t-shirts. You wouldn't expect that that was so popular, but I guess it is. That one participates, that site section participates in more orders than any other product site section in the data that I have. That's just such a, for me, I think that's by far my favorite feature. So being able to do attribution of anything, you can pick any dimension and any metric, and then the attribution can bridge between each other. So that uh, for me is like a game changer. So that opens up the ability to do detailed content analysis. I can do way deeper analysis on all my search and all those other components. So uh, I, again, I just right. love and that flexibility. You didn't, you didn't have to make any implementation changes. This is all based on historical data that was already ingested into CJA, available out of CJ, you know, available out of the box in CJA, which is really neat. Okay, last point I want to show you, Charles, is um, so we've shown how you can do some really cool stuff with just the GA data, but let's let me show you how powerful it can actually be when you combine it with other channels of data. You know, one of the things I hear from our customers who buy CJA coming from the Google Analytics world a lot is the appeal of being able to see the holistic um, cross-device, cross-channel journey of their users. Uh, you know, traditionally in universal analytics, you know, Firebase uh, data is oftentimes where a lot of people will have their mobile app data and the web data is usually in, you know, GA. Combining those together is a little tedious, and I think that's one of the things that GA4 is trying to help solve for. But believe it or not, in CJ, it's really easy to just combine all of that stuff now. So when I bring all of that stuff together, um, I can, well, let, let me show you how to, how, first of all, let me show you how I bring all that stuff together. Data coming together in CJA is all based on connect. Um, let me find my connection here that I was using before. Oh, wait, it's in Google Analytics. So if I look in this connection, um, this is where I would come, like, I have a bunch of data sets, and you can add any data set that you want to into any connection. So when I hit edit a connection, it's going to give me the ability to basically add uh, data from any source that I have in AEP into my CJA connection. So for example, I've got all these different data sets in AEP where, again, might be coming in from Google Cloud Storage. They might be coming in from Firebase. They might be coming in from anywhere you want. And it's simply a matter of adding them in. And when I add them in, you'll notice that it asks you, well, what's the, what's the person ID that you want to use? Again, just highlighting the flexibility that we have to be able to show, um, you know, use any ID as the basis for your analysis. This data is really old, so it's not uh, bringing anything up in the preview. But you can see we also have the ability to bring in all new data. So it will bring in ongoing data that you might add later and the ability to backfill all of your existing historical data as well. So again, just highlighting all of the, 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 uh, the flexibility that Charles mentioned earlier in bringing in data from any source, including all of the historical data. But once that's all in here, um, you can see I've got I've got some more detailed and rich reporting here that shows 
uh, my call center users, my web users, which is coming from my GA data, and my app users, which is coming from my Firebase data. And you can see right here in this Venn diagram how many customers I have that use both the web and the app, how many customers have called the center, the, our call center from all three, but even perhaps more powerful and really highlighting the value of why it's good to bring these things together, I can look at the different products that I'm selling, not only the web revenue that comes from GA, but I can see the, the app revenue coming from Firebase. And when I merge those together, when I add them together, you get a very different story about what your top performing products are. That's, that's a story you wouldn't be able to tell without CJA combining those data sources together for you. Um, that kind of continuity of the data extends through all the sources of data that we have. You know, the ability to show a flow. This flow diagram is showing what pages, page the GA page title, is most frequently leading to calls and what call reason. So you can see damaged product is the most popular reason people are calling our call center after visiting a specific page. Or uh, using Firebase app crashes, which is an uh, out-of-the-box uh, metric you get from Firebase, you can see how many people used the app, had an app crash, then visited the website to purchase because the app had crashed. That sort of holistic customer experience gives me an opportunity to optimize my app and actually measure the fallout of the, of the problem that that app crash has that I would never be able to see otherwise. Trevor, that's awesome. It's a great way to showcase the visual, visualization tools that we have to be able to tie together the different journeys of different channels. So um, thank you so much for such a great demo, really helpful. Definitely want to get to some of the Q&A um, questions that have come through in the chat pot. Um, so let's see. Phil, do you want, do you want to uh, bring in the first question or would you like me to? I'm sorry, Michael. OK, let's go ahead. So. Um, can't we connect universal analytics and CJA? Who wants to take this one? I can start. So with universal, it's going to be super easy to do that connectivity if you're on the enterprise version because it has a data warehouse component. If you're on the free version of uh, universal analytics, it's going to be a lot harder. And it's not because of CJA. It's because Google Analytics doesn't have an export where you get the user level data out. And because of that, it's just really hard to get Google Analytics data on the old version into anything. And that's a Google limitation. So there are potentially some options using scripts where you could use the API and try and run it. Um, I just know there's lots of challenges and it doesn't really work that well. So I do know it's, it's just going to be way better to potentially do that on GA4. Uh, or again, there's some options you could look at at doing on the universal. Although I would also add to that that um, that's that's for historical data. If you want to just put CJA on top of your live UA data collection, that's very easy to do. You don't yes. get all of the historical data, but you can certainly get it from that point forward, even on the free version. And and one question of clarification, Trevor, for you. Um, if you want to bring in the combined data from different sources, like you showcase call center data, um, mm -hmm. Would the incoming data need to be formatted like in a CSV? How, how can they ingest that data? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question. So um, the Adobe Experience platform relies on something that we call the Experience Data Model, XDM. It basically is a fancy name for the schemas that we offer in, in AEP. So when you bring data in, it gets put into this Adobe Experience Model. Now, you can either create your own custom schema if you want to, no big deal. And that's very easy to do and very easy to get your data into as well. Or you can also use some of our out of the box uh, schema locations as well. So you, if, you know, if you wanna move things into standard uh, locations that unlocks a bunch of features in the Adobe Experience platform, that's also doable. Adobe has a lot of data manipulation things too that makes that easy. So if I have a CSV file, it's, you know, you can go right into the UI, drag and drop that CSV file in there. There's even a step that allows you to map the columns of your CSV into the different schema locations 
that you're populating in AEP, and then you're good to go. So um, that mapping step works for CSV, it works for FTP, we have you know, streaming connections, we have uh, APIs, we have all of those out of the box connectors that Charles highlighted before too. So lots of lots of good options for you. And one, one thing I love about that as like a differentiator is that flexibility of creating your own schemas because I've often had customers who want to send a raise and Google Analytics only has e-commerce arrays, but it doesn't support arrays for anything else. It's very common that, as an example, you might have a, a page, and that page has metadata, and something as simple as a content author, you might have pages with multiple authors, or you might have site speed metrics, and instead of dispatching everything as its own event, it's way more efficient and cleaner to send things in arrays. And with CJA, you can build your own arrays, you can build your own schema, and you can ingest it and then parse that data on the fly in all these different formats, which again, just starts to unlock all these kind of new possibilities of not having to go out to BigQuery or your data warehouse and do that analysis there. But now the marketer can easily go into the platform and do it themselves. That leads into our next question. Perfect, perfect segue. So Charles, how does CJA differ from Google BigQuery? So the, I think Trevor hit on it perfectly. Like CJA today, if we think about the different tools like in the Google world, I'll talk from the Google world. It's very common that certain customers are gonna use Data Studio to solve some of their visualization challenges. That's like a version of Tableau. You'll use Google Analytics to do your ad hoc, your analysis on the fly. So you're doing something different from data viz, you're doing something different for reporting. And then when there's limitations in both of those platforms, you go out to BigQuery and you write custom SQL, and then you might put that data into Data Studio or even back into GA to do analysis or more visualization. And CJA, the best way I like to think of it is it starts to be this perfect blend where you have a single purpose built tool to to do everything in one platform. So it brings all the data from all the sources, allows you to build the visualizations and do the analysis on the fly. So with BigQuery, it's often being used to solve challenges that are in the platform. And that's where I, I kind of view CJA solving that. Would you add anything there, Trevor? Yeah, I think you hit on it. I think the big thing here is when you're using BigQuery, it's kind of like 100% of the data complexity is left up to the user to solve. So when you have custom identities that need to be stitched, or you have um, like even just that example we showed with, I wanna convert my page title into my orders metric or convert it into a site section. That's like a custom regex stuff that you have to write or something in, you know, in the SQL directly. And it muddies up your SQL query. Like everything gets, everything is way more complicated when in CJ, we're kind of handling that on the fly, plus giving you things that are not really even possible to do in SQL, like complex segmentation, attribution, you know, some of the fallout flow reports that we have. Those are things I don't even think I would begin to know how to write SQL to accomplish. So like, like Charles said, I think um, CJ kind of gives you this holistic package where it's data visualization, the ability to merge these data sets together super easily and then query it at a speed that's way faster than uh, you know, a, a general purpose data warehouse tool. The system we have is purpose built to query event type data and it does it faster than anything else out there, uh, especially SQL based tools. And just one thing I, I would outro with that. I, I, from my side, I see this trend with certain platforms in our industry where it seems to be driving the users to get the data out of the platform and do everything within a data warehouse. And that's BigQuery, Azure, AWS, whatever it is. And what I love about CJA is it's that whole concept of self-serve analytics. And it's built for someone that obviously, if you know SQL, you're gonna be able to do lots of amazing things. But even if you don't know SQL, everything Trevor showed today is accessible to that user base. So when I think about like traditional marketing analytics or kind of that broader analytics category, CJA is really solving trying to be a self-service analytics tool 
for the vast majority of users, where it seems the inverse of some of the trend, where it's starting to push users out of the platform to solve various limitations and challenges. And that's that's what I love personally about CJA is that I can do like 99% of the analysis I need directly in that platform. And, and for that remaining 1%, CJA actually comes bundled with the Adobe Experience query service. So if SQL is a huge sticking point for you, you get that with CJA out of the box as well. So our goal is to make it so you don't have to use SQL. But if you do, you know, that 1% of the time, you can still do it. Come, it comes bundled with CJA. Okay, we have so many great questions. We really love to get to them all, but we're running short on time. Uh, we'll definitely send out a link to the recording. We'll get to you individually with uh, specific answers to questions. Um, I think one really good question, let's see. Um, do you wanna quickly, Trevor, just talk about the difference between Adobe Analytics and Customer Journey Analytics, and then we'll wrap it up? Yep. Yep, so Adobe Analytics in many ways, like Google Analytics, is based on a fixed schema. You don't get to control that. There's a limited number of props and EVARs. There's not as much flexibility. You don't have as many, like there's unique value limitations that exist. There's other limitations, um, you know, based on the ability to merge out of order or historical data. Adobe Analytics doesn't support that stuff. That's why we built CJA, because our customers have needed that for many years. And so CJ is built on top of the Adobe Experience platform, like Charles has said several times, purpose built so that it can use any flexible schema, ingest historical data. We've removed all the limitations. There's no limitations on the number of variables that you have, the number of unique values you have. And on top of that, the ability to manipulate your dimensions and your metrics with string manipulations and data views, custom sessions and stuff. All of that stuff is uniquely doable in CJA and not in Adobe Analytics, which is why we have so many customers upgrading from Adobe Analytics to CJA as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of meaningful diff and we can we have resources that can definitely help you learn more about the differences in CJA from both Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics that we'll provide after the webinar is over. Thank you so much, guys. Michael. Awesome. Looks like we've answered all the questions we can for today. Uh, thank you, Danielle, Trevor, and Charles, and all of you for attending today. Before you disconnect, a pop-up window should appear in the slide area with the survey. Please help us improve our webinars and complete the survey. We would also like to inv invite you to join us for our Experience Makers Live virtual event on September 13th and 14th, where you can learn directly from businesses that lead and succeed in customer experience management. There's a registration link in the contour, content resources area on your console. Look for a follow-up email from us for the recording of today's session and the other content provided. Thank you again. This concludes today's webinar.